So in this next video in Science, Technology, and Society, we're going to talk about the antecedents in the modern ages, which ranges about um, the 1600s until the 1900s, 20th, 20th century, or such. Okay, so in this modern ages, this is where the historical period when people realized the importance of transportation, communication, and production. And this is where um, industrialization took place. But of course, with this industrialization, there are, of course, greater, greater risk on human health, food safety, and of course, this is the start of where um, the damaging of our environment because of factories and such. So anyways, what we're going to talk about in this video are the antecedents in the modern ages. Again, there's a lot of them, but we're only going to tackle some okay, of the most important innovations in the modern ages. One of them is the compound microscope, microscopes, or some will call them the light light microscope so the invention of this light microscope is an this is an instrument that enables the human eye by means of a lens or combination of lens to observe enlarged images of very tiny objects so it made us see the fascinating details of the worlds within worlds okay the micro world in fact so this is one of those early compound microscopes okay and this is the picture of it um, about 1590, there are two Dutch spectacle makers, Zacharias Janssen and his son Hans, while experimenting with several lenses in a tube, discovered that nearby objects appeared greatly enlarged with this lenses that they, that, they, that they were experimenting. That was the forerunner of the compound microscope and, of course, of the telescope. So in 1609, Galileo, the father of modern physics and astronomy, heard of these experiments and worked out this principle of the lenses and he made a much better instrument with with a focusing device we will call that the, the telescope rather telescope so that's the end of the compound microscope part um, and we will be moving forward with this one which Galileo Galilei discovered we're going to focus now on the telescope so first, Phoenicians cooking on sand discovered glass around 3500 BCE, but it took another 5,000 years or so before glass was shaped into lens to create the first ever what we call the telescope. Hans Lipper, uh, Lipper, sorry, Hans Lippershe, I'm sorry about that, of Holland, is often credited with the invention of the telescope sometime around 1600, 16th century. He almost certain wasn't the first to make to make one, but he was the first to make the new device widely known. Okay, so the telescope was introduced to astronomy in 1609, but by what we have just um, mentioned by the Italian scientist Galileo Galilei, and he was the first man to see craters on the moon. Okay, he went he went on to discover sunspots. Okay, obviously on the sun, <laughs> the four large moons on Jupiter. The rings of Saturn, okay, um, and many more. His telescope was similar to opera glasses. It, it was used to arrange, it, it used an arrangement of glass lenses to magnify these objects. This provided, provided up until 30 times magnification and a narrow field of view. So Galileo could see no more than a quarter of the moon's face without repositioning his telescope. So that's it for the telescope. Next in our list is what we call the Jacquard loom. It's a loom, okay? So most people probably don't think of weaving looms, okay, as a forerunner of computers. But thanks to the French silk weaver, Joseph Marie Jacquard, enhancement to automated weaving helped lead to the invention of computer, computer punch cards and the advent, advent of data processing. So this is um, the loom that Joffet, Joff, Joseph Marie Jacquard made, okay? Um, in Lyon, he was a French. A jacquard was employed in a factory and used his spare time in constructing his improved loom. In 1801, he exhibited his invention at the Industrial Exhibition at Paris, France. In 1803, he, summoned, he was summoned to Paris to work for the Conservateur de Parts et Métier. I don't think if I if I pronounced that correctly, a loom by Jacques de Van Cousseau in 1709 to 1782, deposited there, suggested various improvements in his own, which he gradually perfected to its final state. So that is this is the early beginnings of, of Jacquard, of the Jacquard loom. 
So Joseph Marie Jacquard's invention was an attachment that sat on top of a loom. Okay, a series of cards with holes punched in them would rotate through the device, and each hole in the card corresponded with a specific hook on the loom, which serves as a command to raise or to lower the hook. The position of the hook dictated the pattern of raised and lowered threads, allowing textiles of repeat to repeat complex patterns with great speed and precision. Okay, with great speed and precision. Of course, this um, had a lot of issues in such a way that you know it there's a lot of people that 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 was against this because it will lower the manpower uh, because instead of humans using that it will be the the loom itself of using that so um the labor um there was a, a an issue about the labor but nonetheless the loom was declared declared a public property in 1806 and jacquard was rewarded with a pension and a royalty on each machine joseph marie jacquard died on olin's Rhone on the 7th of August 1834 and six years later a statue was erected in honor in his honor at Lyon France Leon France okay so that started the jacquard loom okay after that let's go up in the air and let's talk about airplanes okay so who invented the airplanes it was the Wright brothers specifically Orville and Wilbur Wright okay that's their names they, they are the inventors of the first airplane on December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers launched the era of human flight when they successfully tested a flying vehicle that took off by its own power, flew naturally at even speeds, and descended without damage. So these are the Wright brothers. This is Orville over here, and this is Wilbur. Okay, so they are the famous Wright brothers. But just take note, even before the Wright brothers took their first flight in 1903, there are other inventors. Okay, which would be, which would um have have had made numerous attempts to do so okay among these are the kites the hot air balloons the airships zeppelins gliders and other types of aircrafts okay while some progress was made everything changed when the wright brothers decided to tackle the problem of a manned flight okay um there is really a human being there on that um, specific uh, plane or this airplane that they that they discovered so after the Wright brothers, inventors continued to improve the airplanes that they have started. This led to the invention of jets, okay? So which are used both in military and commercial flights. That's what we're enjoying now, okay? A jet is an airplane propelled by, of course, jet engines. Uh, jets fly much faster than propeller-powered aircraft and at, of course, higher altitudes. And two engineers were the ones credited with the development of a jet engine, namely Frank Whittle of the United Kingdom and Hans von Ohain of German, Germany. Uh, it was during the late 1930s that they um, started these jet engines, and this is now the jet engine airplane that we're um, enjoying now. Since then, some firms have developed more um, advanced techniques in flying airplanes, and they even tried to, to do the electric aircraft that run on electric motors rather than internal combustion engines. So the electricity, came from alternative fuel sources such as fuel cells, solar cells, ultra capacitors, power beaming, and batteries. And I know um, f today there are even more um, innovations with this um, electric aircrafts. And I know technology in, in, is in its infancy, but some production models are now already on the market, okay, ready to be, to be sold. Okay, and lastly, in our antecedents in the modern ages one which we use okay obviously right now is the television so who's the one who invented this john logie baird was was one was the one who, who was credited for this he was born on august 13th 1888 in helensburg dunbarton scotland and died on june 14th 1946 in bexhill on sea sussex england Baird is best remembered for inventing the mechanical television system. During the 1920s, John Baird and American Clarence W. Hansel patented the idea of using arrays of transparent rods to transmit images for television and facsimiles, respectively. So this is one early a model of a television. Okay, um, The television pioneer, okay, Baird, created the first television pictures of objects in motion in 1924. Also, the first televised human face in 1925, and a year later, he televised the first 
moving object image at the Royal Institute in London. His 1928 transatlantic transmission of the image of a human face was a broadcasting milestone. Okay, to tell you that. Color television started in 1928. Stereoscopic television and television by infrared light were all demonstrated by Baird before the 1930. He successfully lobbied for broadcast time with the BBC, okay, the British Broadcasting Company. And they started broadcasting television on the Baird 30 line system in 1929. The first simultaneous sound and vision telecast was broadcast in 1930. And in July 1930, the first British television play was transmitted. It was entitled The Man with the Flower in His Mouth. Okay, and that ends pretty much our antecedents in the modern ages. Um, we have discussed only five of them out of the many hundreds or say thousands of antecedents in the modern ages. So let me recall, we have talked about the compound microscope. From the compound microscope, um, the telescope was was created by Galilee. We have the Jacquard loom by Joseph Marie Jacquard. We have the airplane by the Wright brothers. And we have, of course, the television by Baird. So that's it for our antecedents in the modern ages. And that's it for this video. Um, thank you for watching. This is our fourth video in science, technology, and society. Um, next up in our series will be I'll be talking about um, antecedents and you know innovations now. This time made by Filipino scientists. So better check check up my next video and hope to see you in the upcoming videos. Okay, thank you very much. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Um, you will surely don't will not regret that okay thank you very much and see you soon bye